It's a season of change. Hey again, welcome back to my place. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you've had a good week so far. For many years now, I've wanted to get into climbing. And only this year, 2021, have I been fortunate enough to have people to go with. An incentive. Sometimes the biggest thing that drives discipline, for me anyway, is having someone you don't want to let down. So these fridge magnets are for a couple new friends of mine that keep me driven. And today I'm going to show you how I made them. Let's begin. Just like last time, we're going to be using Super Sculpey. It's a lovely bakeable polymer clay that I adore, aside from the flesh tone. I finally ordered a bunch of small, strong magnets online, so I won't have to be purging the fridge and picking favorites. Turns out, I had a few small hex bolts from a piece of hardware that I didn't wind up needing, which partly inspired this project, along with a few listings on Etsy. And we can't sculpt without sculpting tools. Well, we can, but tools make it a lot easier in certain situations. First, we'll start by sketching out the rough shapes and forms that we'll be aiming for. This way, we can better understand how much raw material we'll need to use, and also feel out how they'll look in relation to each other. The shapes and colors I chose were based directly off of the holds in our local climbing gym. Now that I have a blueprint, we're going to start warming up and kneading the Super Sculpey until it's soft enough to begin sculpting our first shape. The one in question is the blue upside down bowl hold. The biggest challenge with this one is going to be hollowing out the concave bottom while maintaining the roundness on top. I made the mistake of starting by pressing it into a flat side first and trying to round it out and carve the dish in the bottom afterwards. The problem with this was that it wound up being a half circle when seen from above, whereas I needed the sides to come inward more before reaching the flat side, so I restarted. This time around, we're going to roll it into a ball, carve out the bottom, and use our thumb to flatten out the harsh edges left behind by the sculpting tools. After we're happy with the shape, we can use a box cutter blade to cut off a flat edge where we'll embed the magnet. A little bit of cleanup around some edges to make it more symmetrical, and we're ready to move on. Next up is the pink trapezoidal hold. The pink holds at the gym that this is based off of have a very specific way that they sit away from the wall, and after an attempt at replicating that, I realized that I should opt for a simpler design. So we did! This shape is a lot easier and less organic, so it can be achieved with practically a box cutter blade alone. Just to cut at the top, sides, front, and bottom, and it's done. Honestly, I don't think calling this trapezoidal is an accurate description, but it feels right. Onto the yellow hold. This one is what's known as a jug. Jugs are probably the easiest, no, actually, without a doubt, the easiest holds that you can find at the climbing gym. They're basically a handle just screwed onto the wall. Anyway, this form is pretty organic, just a simple hook-like shape with rounded edges. Not much to say about it here. It's easy to grip onto, easy to sculpt. You stick a magnet on the back and set it aside so we can start on the green hold. The green hold, like all the others, presented interesting challenges that forced me to start it all over again. These little hex bolts that we're using are really small and shallow, but not enough for how shallow I made the green piece. So we're going to restart and make it just a bit thicker this time. There's a bit of a groove on the flat edge. On the real thing, this is where you crimp your fingers to hold onto. And to avoid people from using the other sides, the real ones are tapered quite a lot. So, we'll taper the sides with the box cutter blade, but not so much that it'll mess with the screw depth. To achieve that shallow lip on the straight side, we'll use a combination of pressing with a fingernail and sculpting tools to get it right. And lastly, at four magnets, we're out of hex bolts. But four small magnets might visually seem weird, so we'll make what's known as a volume that will also function as a magnet. Real volumes are rather large and can be used as a handhold, foothold, sometimes just a place for a hold or two to be attached onto. For that reason, we're going to embed magnets into two sides on the front face of the volume so that we can put other magnets onto it, just like the real thing. This one is going to be similar to the pink one in that its shape is only a few precise cuts using the box cutter blade. Now that we have the shape sculpted, we can add the hex bolts by pushing them into the soft material. They're going to be baked into the form, and since we don't want to make more work for ourselves than necessary, we'll mask off the tops of them so we can paint freely around them and peel off the tape afterwards. Now that they're ready, we'll press them in gently and hope that they don't run into one of the magnets, which happened right here. 
The magnet held on pretty tight to the screw, but after it's out, we can place it back in at a slightly different angle. With the green hold, the magnet was completely in the way, so we just had to make a few new voids for magnets on the side that freed up enough space in the middle for the bolt to rest between them. Okay, I think that's the last step before we put them in the oven to harden and cure. We'll just put them in on this cookie sheet and... Oh, the magnet stuck to the sheet. That's all right. We'll just carefully place them so that none of the magnets are touching that side. Okay, well, I guess we'll just bake it like that. And have a quick coffee break. All right, back to it. A lot of the magnets have come off in the oven, so we're just going to super glue them back in. In retrospect, we should have baked the holds without the magnets, because high heat can mess with a magnet's strength and polarity. However, I didn't remember this in the moment, and just wound up gluing in the baked magnets as they were. To allow for a stronger bond, we'll score the inside of the hole and put a tiny bit of glue inside, and press it in with a tool to avoid getting glue on our fingers, even though we'll get glue on our fingers anyway. Rinse and repeat a few times, and whoop! Oh, that's not good. Okay, perfect. Next up, we can take the holds outside, spray them with a granular spray paint, and then a black spray paint, a primer, to help the acrylic paint we're covering it with to stick on better. The primer does not in fact have to be black gloss, that's just what we had. Just to be sure, we'll let them sit until the next day to dry. Now we can mix up our acrylics and start to paint. Luckily most of the colors we need are really easy to mix, or we have ready straight from the bottle like pink or grey. We'll hit them all with a first coat, then let them sit to dry, paint them with a second coat, dry. After that we can remove the tape from the hex bolts which is honestly one of the most satisfying parts of a project like this. And equally, if not more satisfying, is the next process, which is where we get to weather and age the surfaces. For this, we're going for a combination of rubber left behind by the climbing shoes and high contact areas where you might encounter slippage, and chalk in more grooves and edges where people would usually grip the hold more. At first, I tried using a rubber o-ring that did the trick on the green hold, but it wasn't working quite as well in the other pieces, so we moved on to simply white and black acrylic paint lightly brushed on. After some trial and error, a cotton swab turns out to be the best tool for the task at hand. We don't want to overdo the weathering, so if we add too much we can remove some by wiping it away with a clean cotton swab, cloth, or a finger. <laughs> and it's hard to describe, but you can just kind of tell when they're done. We check them over to see if there's any spots we missed, like the bottom of the blue hold. Sometimes people like to put their thumbs underneath for extra stability. Anyway, once that's done, we can hit them with a few coats of matte clear coat, and all that's left to finish up is cleaning up the backs with a black marker, followed by signing and dating each one with a little message on the biggest piece of real estate. And finally, we're done. So here they are on the only appropriate display, a fridge. <laughs> the friends these are going to are moving away pretty soon in the next couple of months. My family used to live where they're moving to, actually, back before I was born. I'd never been until a few years ago, on a road trip. Here I am, in front of the old house. The lattice work on the front porch my dad did is still there, but that's about the only thing that hadn't changed. Even since this photo was taken, just about everything in my life has changed. And while I'm going to miss my friends a lot, I think I'm ready for this new chapter. Drive safe, you too. And thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next week. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. How's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Working today? Yeah. Keeps you busy? Yeah. What about you? How's, yeah. how's work been? Yeah. Sorry? I said, when you're not making videos and stuff, too. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually making one right now. Nice! Yeah. You know, I'm in. Yeah, you're in it. Hey, I'll be in the outtakes. Like, this is fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... I'm gonna use this at the end. <laughs>